I'm gonna let AI teach me Ableton Live. Let's see how well it does and what I can learn. Okay, so I'm sure you've heard at this point, but there's this really cool thing called Chat GPT. Well, really cool, really terrifying, depending on who you ask. Uh, released by OpenAI, and it's a free beta um, to test out this conversational artificial intelligence bot that they created where you can essentially ask questions and it will give you answers in real time. Uh, now, I've tested this this weekend and got some interesting results, but I thought this would make for a fun video to uh, say, okay, if I started with Ableton Live from scratch, what could it teach me and uh, what could it teach me to do? So let's dive in and get started. I've put links in the description if you wanna try this out yourself. Uh, and the, the results you get, I think likely will be different than what I get because it's kind of generated in real time, but let's dive in and see. So first off, um, I'm brand new to Ableton. So what is Ableton Live? All right, we'll let it work for a second. Uh, one thing I know they say is it will go uh, fast or slow depending on how many people are using it, so it might take a little bit. Okay, Ableton Live is a digital audio workstation and music sequencer that allows users to create, produce, and perform music. Oh, great. It's popular among electronic musicians and DJs for its intuitive, user-friendly interface and powerful auto editing and mixing capabilities. Live features real-time audio processing and allows users to create, manipulate audio in a non-linear improvisational environment. It also includes a range of virtual instruments, effects, and other tools for creating electronic music. Well, not just electronic music, but yes, it does. It's pretty good. I'm gonna try to save all these and put them maybe in a Google Doc or something something I'll link in the description too. Um, okay, so I, I, I want to um, purchase Ableton Live and actually let's see what this does. Okay, how do I purchase Ableton Live? I don't know if it'll have the answer or not. We're trying it out in real time, we'll see. To purchase Ableton Live, you can visit Ableton website or choose the version of Live you'd like to purchase, wow. There are several versions available, including standard version, suite with additional sounds and tools, and a free trial version. It forgot intro. Once you've chosen the version you'd like to purchase, you can add to your account and check it using a credit card or other payment method. You'll then receive a download serial number, which you can use to install and activate live on your computer. Okay, great. So um, I just purchased Ableton Live suite. Uh, I hope that AI gets um, uh, their credit for this and gets their uh, credit. I just had an Ableton crash. That's fine. We're doing this in real time. Okay. Um, so let's see. Let's open a new set here. And uh, how do I get started with Ableton Live? Let's see what it asked me to do first. It's thinking. It's thinking. To get started, here we go with Ableton Live. You can follow these steps. Install live on your computer by using the download link and serial number you receive when you purchase it. Good. Open live and familiar yourself with the interface. Live's wow. Live's interface is divided into three main areas, session view, arrangement view, and the mixer. Create a new project by going to file, new, or pressing control N or command N, Mac OS. Okay, so I actually just did that. New live set. All right, so there's my new live set. Oh, here we go. Add tracks to your project by going to create insert audio track. Okay, create insert audio track. Uh, or by pressing control T. Uh, on Windows, Command T on Mac OS. Record audio or MIDI by using Live's built-in recording tools. You can also import audio or MIDI files from other sources. Edit, process your audio using Live's editing and effects tools, mix and arrange your project using Live's mix and arrangement view. Export your project by going to File, Export, or pressing Control E on Windows or Command D on Mac. Uh, that's actually not right. So that's one of the glaring uh, issues with AI, or at least with this particular tool is, it's just like open sourcing information. It's grabbing information from uh, different things that's found online. So export your finished project by going to file export. That's correct. Or by pressing control E on Windows, Command D on Mac OS. So if I do that, Command D, that's obviously not doing it. It's Command uh, Shift R is our export. So um, whew, my job is safe for at least another couple months. Chat GPT is wrong on that one. So that's really good. Um, let's see. How do I load a sound into Ableton Live? Because I want to get started, right? I want to start creating my own music. So let's see uh, how I load a sound into Ableton Live. I, this is fascinating to me though, because um, you know, as someone who teaches Ableton Live, here it's cranking. As someone who teaches Ableton Live for a career, I mean, there's a strong possibility that in five, 10 years, you know, all the knowledge I have because it's posted online could be uh, you know, seen by AI, seen by a tool like this that's trained using machine learning that could then spit out my information and generate stuff in real time. Imagine as a, a company like Ableton, it, you know, once OpenAI, if they release some 
uh, API for this, or maybe they already have, I don't know, I'm not a developer, where Ableton could tie into that. And in the help menu, you could say, how do I blah, blah, blah. And as opposed to just a set of articles, it's like generating that in real time. And if it has the intelligence of Ableton, the company, or intelligence of Ableton Live certified trainers like me, uh, then hopefully it's correct info. So let's see what it says here. To load a sound in Ableton Live, you can follow these steps. Open your project in Ableton Live. Open the browser, wow. Okay, open the browser by clicking on the browser tab in the upper left corner of the live window, okay? So I'm gonna do that, there's a browser tab. In the browser, navigate to the folder where your sound is stored. You can use the folders on the left side of the browser to navigate to different locations on your computer. Uh, okay, not incredibly, incredibly clear, but uh, I know what it's saying. Select the sound file you want to load by clicking on it. Okay, so I wanna load this electric piano file here. So actually it says load it by clicking on it. Not true, loading, clicking on it, previews it. Double clicking on it loads it. So okay, it's got, got that one wrong as well too. But it's gonna be close, right? And it's like a real time kind of thing. Okay, so it says uh, select the sound you want by clicking on it. You always use the search field at the top of the browser to search for a specific file. So that's super handy to surface that as a, you know, if you're a brand new Ableton Live user, you could go up and say, you know, bass or whatever and search for your sounds. And not a lot of people know that. So that's super helpful. It brought that up. Uh, drag the sound file from the browser into your project that's creating a new audio track and load the sound to the track. Uh, technically it creates a new MIDI track and loads that on the track unless it's of course uh, an audio file. Cause it looks like down here, alternatively you can use the import audio command in the file menu to import a sound file into your project. This will create a new audio track and uh, load the sound into that track. Once the sound is loaded to your project, you can live, use Live's editing and effects tools to process and manipulate it as needed. Um, so again, this is the context here is I wanted a MIDI sound and maybe I could have specified that a little better. Like how do I load a MIDI sound on Ableton Live? It's telling me audio, but again, that's like close enough to hopefully get me started. And you're not like commenting on a YouTube video, hoping you get a response back or, booking a one-on-one -on -one session with me, you're signing up for a, a, a site or anything. Um, okay, let's see what else we can do. Let's do a couple more of these. This is pretty fun. I hope y'all are enjoying this. I'm, I'm definitely having fun. Uh, this, is, this is really cool. Okay, how to save a file. This is pretty easy. This is a softball in Ableton Live. Let's see what it tells me to do. What I like too, um, that I think it is this is doing really well is see how it's given me this like step by step. Yeah, to save a file in Ableton Live, you can follow these steps. It's given me really detailed steps, um, which is great. Honestly, I may try this out as I'm like doing videos to then go back and have it generate step by step, like in a blog post kind of thing. So it says open your project in Ableton Live. Great. Go to file save or press command uh, S on Mac or Control S on Windows to save, enter the save dialog. Okay, great. Um, in the save dialog, choose a location on your computer where you want to save the file. You can also specify a name for the project in the file name field. Okay, it actually says save as, not file name, but close enough. Uh, click the save button to save your project. Okay, so um, let's save my project. AI told me to. Okay, so there's my project. Uh, it says alternatively, you can use the save as command in the file menu to save a copy. Oh, that's really, really cool. Save a copy of your project under a different name or location. This can be helpful if you want to create multiple versions of your project, you want to save a backup copy of your project. Uh, it's always a good idea to regularly save your projects you work on it to avoid losing any unsaved changes. Live will automatically, also automatically save a backup copy of your project in a temporary folder so you can recover your work in case of a crash. Or So that's really cool. What I love about that is um, as a training thing, I mean, this is one of the things that Ableton as a company really wants you as a certified trainer to be able to do. If someone asks, how do I save an Ableton Live file? Yes, show them how to save but then give them some extra info like well, you can also do save as. And then that extra little bit there, it's always a good idea to regularly save your project. Like that's great. It's, it's amazing that it's surfacing that, which is really, really cool. Okay, let's do one more. This one is super important. Who is the best Ableton Live certified trainer? I mean, let's, let's see how good it is. We all know what the answer to that one is. Let's, let's see what it does here. So it's thinking, it's gotta, I mean, it shouldn't have to think, oh, sorry, I'm not able to browse the internet, so I can't answer that question. Yeah, AI still has quite a ways to go. Actually, one more question. Which is better for running tracks in Ableton Live? Session view or arrangement view? Let's see, see what uh, OpenAI can do for us. Both session arrangement view and Ableton Live have their own unique strengths and purposes. Session view is a nonlinear improvisational environment that allows you to quickly and easily create, manipulate, 
musical ideas in real time is well suited for live performance DJing and other active music making. Ranger View, on their hands, the linear time-based environment that allows you to arrange and edit music more traditional sequencer-like manner. It is well suited for composing, arranging, and mixing music. It allows you to create more structured, pro uh, uh, polished final project. Which view is better for running tracks than with live would depend on the specific, specific needs of your project and your personal preferences. Some users may find they prefer to work exclusively in one view or the other, while others may find they like to use both views in combinations. Awfully useful, uh, often useful to experiment with both views and see which one works best for you in any given situation. Well. I think OpenAI needs to watch a few more of my tutorials to learn uh, how to run tracks in Ableton Live. Um, but you can learn how to do that without having to go to, to uh, OpenAI to chat uh, GPT to learn how to run tracks in Ableton Live. If you want to do that, just hit the subscribe button, enable the bell icon. Uh, I post a brand new tutorial every single day. Uh, and if you want to get my free track template, it's a great way to get started. Created by a human not created using machine learning and AI, uh, then head to from studio to stage.com slash template. This is super fascinating though to me, because again, um, there's some things that got wrong. There's some context that I think it's missing here. Like it's description of session view and arrangement view is very much based on a manual reading of Ableton Live, not from the context of running tracks live on stage and someone that's done that for a while. So there's obviously gonna be things that are missing, but again, I love the like step one through four kind of base thing. There was stuff that was missed about uh, keyboard shortcuts and stuff like that. Actually, let's try one more thing before we wrap up here. Okay, uh, what are um, the best, uh, let's do this. What are five of the best keyboard shortcuts for Ableton Live? Let's see what it says. So obviously it's it's like, I wanted to make a value judgment on what the five of the best are, uh, which is gonna be interesting to see what it says. Uh, and then let's see what it actually pulls out control in. Okay, create a new project, Con control T, command T, create a new audio track, control E, export your project as an audio file. Uh, it's not actually right. Save your project, space bar, start to stop, playback live. These keyword shortcuts can help you quickly access common commands and save time to work in live. Um, you can see we'll see keyword shortcuts by going, to, okay, so again, that's the beauty of this is, yeah, uh, one, it got the export your project as an audio file thing. That's not right. Like I could export, I guess you can take like a clip and do command D, I think, and like export that out. Um, but it's not gonna let me export my project. So I did get that wrong. But this whole last bit where it says, uh, of course there are many other keyboard shortcuts available in live. You can customize them to suit your own workflow. See a full list going to preferences, keyboard shortcuts. Uh, again, to me, that's brilliant because it's giving me a little more context about Ableton Live. Imagine InfoView in Ableton Live, if it was powered by chat GPT, if it was powered by machine learning, if you could search in InfoView, um, the, the future is bright. Again, it depends on who you ask, if that's terrifying or exciting to you, but this excites me. Um, you know, I, I think I still have a job at least for a little bit more. Uh, like I mentioned in the beginning, um, I'm gonna copy all of this out, throw it in a Google Doc, link in the description below so that you can see uh, the results of what uh, ChatGPT uh, came up with when I asked it questions. And again, the best way to learn how to use Ableton Live, uh, the best free way is to hit subscribe to this channel, enable the bell icon so you see all my free tutorials when they go live. And if you're inter interested in going even further and particularly learning about Ableton Live in a live performance context, then consider becoming a From Studio to Stage student. Again, you can do that by heading to fromstudiostage.com slash subscribe. And a great next step for you, if you're interested in that, but not sure you wanna commit, fromstudiostage.com slash template again to download my free tracks template. So um, the robots are not coming for us yet. The robot apocalypse is, is not uh, upon us, but this is cool. I'm super excited by this. Thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye.